Hello everybody. I hope everybody's having a great weekend. I know I am. It's already been pretty busy. Just got back into town after running about 90 miles away to go do an inspection. So I'm back. I'm gonna get some stuff done. Hope everybody's having a great day though. It's chilly but but sunny. Let's just go with that. I know a lot of people got snow recently. We have not yet so we're lucky. I thought it would be great to do a little live on the secret garden because it is getting chillier here. It just reminds us of spring a little bit. But it's actually one of my very favorite books. If you haven't read it, I do recommend it. And I like the parallel too of what what the book is about. And this is a quote from the book. I'm just glancing at some of it's a little bit cut off here um but here goes and again oh i didn't introduce myself this is chandra rankin from chandrarankin.com and i'm coming to you out of the heartland all right <laughs> do a little backwards here but all right well, i'm going to go ahead and read this quote one of the new things people began to find out in the last century was that thought just mere thoughts are as powerful as electric batteries as good for one as sunlight is or a bad as one bad for one as poison to let a sad thought or a bad thought get into your mind is as dangerous as letting a scarlet fever germ get into your body if you let it stay there after it has gotten in you may never get it out as long as you live. As long as you live. Surprising things can happen to anyone who, when a disagreeable or discouraged thought comes into his or her mind, just has the sense to remember in time and push it out by putting in an agreeable, determinedly courageous one. Two things cannot be in the same place. And this is actually a quote from... Um, a secret garden where you tend a rose my lad a thistle cannot grow Frances Hudson Burnett wrote the secret garden and it is one of my all-time favorite books I've actually referred to this book in previous lives before but I didn't just talk about the book in general um, it's actually a journey of a beautiful transformation of a person and a place and the person is Mary Lennox that's the main character and the place is the secret garden that she finds and it and they parallel each other in growth and change they both become better um, in the book Mary finds herself in her uncle's home very far away from the things that she typically knew and grew up around and she is a rude sour little girl she dislikes most things and people does anybody know someone like this most people that she comes into contact with she does not like but as she gets to know the people and the grounds of the of her new in and the place that where she's living um she does begin to soften despite herself <laughs> She happens upon the key to this secret garden and she unlocks it. It's a forbidden place. She is really not supposed to go there. But in doing that, she starts to un unlock her health and happiness. She, she came to that area as a weakly little sullen girl, but in doing this, her Appetite gets healthier. She becomes stronger. You can see the color in her face looks better. And she, she plays outside in the fresh air. Think of what nature can do to you when you're outside and enjoying it. Even on a chilly day, it's fresh air. It's invigorating. So as she does this, she plays outside. She builds that rapport with some of those around her. And her curiosity through this this new home she's in it's very very large because they're a very well-to-do family but um she meets a little boy her age who's Colin and ends up being her cousin 
he <coughs> he is also rather sickly. But through the influence of his cousin, he gains strength. And the two of them together, again, this is forbidden, but they do it anyway. I love that. A little rebellious. They go and they awaken the garden and they make it come to life. And another person in the book is Dickon, the brother of her maidservant, and he helps them as well. In doing this, she discovers a purpose that she didn't even know she had. There, it was a twofold purpose, if not more. One was in helping her cousin get well, because he was just like, oh, I'm so sick, I can't do anything. Well, he was, he was atrophying because he didn't even use his muscles and he was making himself more sick by declaring that he was sick. So it was a cyclical thing, <laughs> no pun intended. But she helped him become well. Um, she, you know, it was a slow process. She got him out in the fresh air. And through that whole process, he ended up being able to get out of his wheelchair and he realized he was making himself sick. He could, he could be free from that. And the second part is, um, is the garden, the second purpose that she finds. It's just awakened that, and it made a space become new that used to be in use, but no longer was. Sometimes you have to realize that, that you need to believe in something, and then it can come true. And that's kind of that process that she and her cousin were coming through. Um, you can't dwell on things that hold you back and expect to move you forward. You cannot dwell on those things that hold you back and expect to move forward. And it, this is why I love this quote so much from the book, where you tend a rose, my lad, a thistle cannot grow. You cannot have two opposing thoughts or things in an area because one takes up space, the other cannot. This is a concept if you've ever heard of. Um, you cannot serve two different opposing trains of thought. You can't serve two masters if one is good and one is bad. Because eventually, you will start to hate one and love the other. You can't be devoted to both. So you really have to choose how you're, how and who and what you're going to pursue. You can't pursue both material goods, just the sake of material goods, and spiritual well-being. I'm not saying you cannot be wealthy, but that shouldn't be your be-all, end-all goal. They're mutually exclusive. Um, so think about what you're worshipping, and by worshipping, I mean... What is your main focus in life? That is what you worship, whether you call it that or not. That is what you become obsessed with, your main focus. What are you obsessed with? What do you worship? What do you worship? You have to think of whether <coughs> you want to serve one or the other. Because your mind cannot be filled with all good and have negative negativity in it. You cannot have a fully negative mind and have a bit of positivity in it. It's It needs to be filled with one and there's not room for the other. Two things cannot occupy that same space. So think about that and your shift of thought that might help you in changing that. Don't believe everything you think. Don't believe everything you think. Challenge your own thought process. Challenge your own thought because you might be worshiping that negative side and you really need to be aware of what you're putting in your mind. You can decide and that will change your entire world. You can find that key like Mary did in the secret garden, even though it's buried really deep. You have that key, even if it's buried deep for so many years and unlock the potential that you have. 
It's inside of you. You just need to dig it out. Discover your own secret garden. Discover your own secret garden. On that note, I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. If you enjoyed this post, like, comment, or share. What's your favorite book that has a great story? Because like I said, this The Secret Garden is one of my all-time favorite books. The whole analogy of it and the story itself, I just love it. Obviously. <laughs> so like, comment, share. I really appreciate it. And have a great weekend. I will see you on the next video.